technically morning. Good morning. Oh, there's like a fingerprint on here. I am just making lunch right now. And then Eric and I are talking about what we should do today because um, it's a really, really nice looking day outside. Let's go look. Blue sky, really clear. I'm sure it's super, super hot, but it means the visibility is really high. So I think we should do some exploring today. So I put together a list of things I want to see. There's 16 of them, and I'm sure this will grow over time. I put this together in like 10 minutes. <laughs> so here's what it is. Read through these and let me know if there are any that I should prioritize because you think um, they're really important. Is the Olympic Park cool, you guys? Let me know if you've been. I'm not really sure. And also, I'm trying to decide between the Donghua Mun Night Market or the Wang Fu Jing Night Market. I have no idea what the difference is. I know they both have like really weird skewers and things. And um, in Thailand, I pinky promised Eric that I would try a cockroach skewer thing. And I never did. So I owe him a cockroach. This is a Buddhist holiday. Oh, I couldn't consume enough alcohol to, to stomach a cockroach. We'll see what we end up doing today. Um, if you have any suggestions or if there's something you really want me to go see, let me know. Um, also, I'm looking for what part of the Great Wall I should go see because I was told not to go to Bada Ling. I'd like to go somewhere where it's not quite as restored, um, so it still has like a little bit of that old feel. So we're gonna go exploring today and I will let you know what we decide on. I looked this tree up, you guys, our new like little Chinese baby, Hal. I did a reverse Google image search and I think it's a money tree. And so it says to not worry about overwatering it, but the lady told me water every 10 days. Let me know if you have a suggestion or if you have a green thumb, because I'm pretty sure I have the opposite of a green thumb. I think they call it a black thumb. It's so cute. We have decided to go to Tiananmen Square today. We don't really know what we're gonna go see other than the square. And I know I wanna see that like giant Mao painting thing. But other than that, I really don't know exactly what's there, but I know it's really big. We'll see. I push straight into them. Hold up. How deep can we guess where I am? I'm at Tiananmen Square in Beijing, China, of course. That's my good old friend Mao behind me. I really don't know anything about that. We thought maybe it was a forbidden city, but. It looks a little small. Everything here is really, really big. There's quite the presence of military here, and uh, they've got a museum, and uh, you know, I probably should have researched this more. I'll look at some stuff online tonight and then let you know what you're looking at, but um, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't really know what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> but I'm here! <laughs> Side. I think it translates roughly to like may the People's Republic of China live on for 10,000 years and then the right side is may the people of the world unite or you could say rally for 10,000 years. The military presence is very strong in this square too as you can imagine like they've got just a tank that's like I think for show over here and they've got like guards everywhere. We're like in DC you know like the Washington Monument and all that it's just like that. Right, oh, that makes sense. China's, so of course it's going to be huge, grandiose. I don't look like I'm Chinese, I just came with this umbrella. I fit in, finally! We just looked at a map and uh, had a building is over there with Mao on it. That's not the Forbidden City. That is Tiananmen. Mun means gate or doorway. Or Door, yeah. The Forbidden City is behind that. Ugh, every time I think I'm around the Forbidden City, if you watch my Beijing vlog, you know what I'm talking about, but every time, I'm not. I still haven't even been close there yet. I've just like seen it from the distance. We're gonna go see how to walk through this gate thing. Oh! I had no idea they did the water shows here. I used to all the pressure I'm not gonna make any like statements or anything, but I think there's a good chance 
That is the Forbidden City. <laughs> You know how at Disneyland, the cool thing to get and wear while you're there, that looks stupid everywhere but Disneyland, is Mickey Mouse ears, or like one of those hats? Well, guess what's cool here at Tiananmen and uh, the Forbidden City? The umbrella hat. I think this actually is the Forbidden City back there. It looks like an ancient wall. And then this is the moat. I do like a good moat though. I don't know what it is about moats. I just really like them. Our plan today was to just go see Tiananmen Square and the surrounding area. We came from that way. And then that is the Palace Museum slash Forbidden City entrance. So our problem right now is we don't know how to leave without going into a park that requires a ticket fee or this that requires a ticket fee. We're gonna do the Forbidden City another day. Uh, don't worry, it's on my list. I don't recommend you do Tiananmen and that stuff around the area and the Forbidden City in the same day unless you're like feeling real lively. They're close together on the map and it's deceiving because they're all really big. This might be TMI, but ladies, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. This is what the majority of the in China look like. Yeah. I feel like spot on it. Do you guys wanna hear a weird thing that we just realized? We had to pay to exit. Our only options were to go through the uh, Palace Museum slash Forbidden Temple or to pay to go into one of the public parks on either side to exit. I find that concept very troubling. If we paid for entrance to Tiananmen, I would have no problem. But the fact that we have to pay to exit is pretty messed up in my opinion. I don't know, I just think it's weird. It's only too quiet person, so it's really nothing to like get mad over. I just like Strange. It's almost worth too quiet just to like be in a quiet area of China. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really pretty. We decided to take a break. Just sit on this nice bench. Everyone around here looks so tired <laughs> because all these tourist sites around here require a lot of walking and the sun is relentless today. That's the word. It's been a beautiful day. It's like blue sky, super pretty. I actually asked on Twitter, should I go to Lama Temple or Tiananmen Square today? And the only response I got was like, don't go outside today. <laughs> I thought that's really funny. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you just took a picture of it. It's fine. I also look kind of weird because not only am I white, but I'm talking to a camera. But we're at this beautiful park and trying to figure out what we want to do for dinner. I was tempted to go out on a limb and try something new and Chinese and fun. Um, partially for you guys so you can see something cool. If there's anything in particular, I know there was one restaurant recommended to us. So I'll have to go check that out or I'll have Eric read what it is because I can't read it. I can't read. But if there's any particular food you're curious about, let me know. I've already tried Peking duck. That's in my um, Beijing vlog. I don't know, I've had a lot of Chinese food in my life so far, <laughs> but I'm always down to try more. So we're just uh, looking up how to get to the place with good pizza, because I found my lactate, so I can eat some pizza tonight. I wanted to say one more thing to you guys while I'm just sitting here. This tank top is like, I think it's made for men. It's like a good size because it's like, kind of flowy but it was too bulky up top in the shoulders so I actually tied it with a hair tie this is what it looks like I think it worked pretty well and if you're curious about how I did that I can show you it's very very easy it's a hair tie works great the Beijing subway system there are a lot of like normal straight metro lines and then there in the subway there's two lines that are round basically they're like a rounded off square so it like goes circular all day long but we live on the bigger one so there's a little one and then a really big one we're on the bigger one it has 44 stops 44 stops on one line really really good pretty much just came home and I got straight to editing it's like 10 45 right now but before I say goodnight I did want to do a little bit of like research about Tiananmen Square um, and share that information with you guys as I find it out so what 
is Tiananmen Square. It is a large city square in the central axis of Beijing. It is named after the Tiananmen, and that's basically the big wall and doorway thing that Mao's portrait is on. There's a lot of important events that have gone on there. The only thing I've ever heard about Tiananmen Square is the Tiananmen Square Massacre. There was a pro-democracy movement, according to Wikipedia. I'm just on the Wikipedia page. It was in 1989. I just remember the picture of that guy sitting in front of the tank, and I know a lot of people died. I don't really want to get into it because the Chinese government scares the shit out of me and I don't need to be talking any opinions on it while I'm in China. Let's just leave it at that. What other historical events happened there? The current government of China was announced, basically, in Tiananmen Square in 1949. The gate Tiananmen was built in the 1400s, that's pretty cool. Oh, in the 1800s, British and French troops considered burning down the gate and the entire Forbidden City. That was around the time that China had a lot of opium problems. The square itself was built in the 1600s, and it was a quarter of the size that it is now, and it eventually got bigger. So in the 50s, like the 1950s, they made it way, way bigger. I think that's when it went from a quarter of the size to the current size that it is now. And I guess it's because Mao, back in the day, wanted it to be the largest square in the world, of course. So they just demolished a bunch of stuff and made it bigger. The modern square can accommodate 600,000 people. That's a lot of people. Ooh, check out this sweet panorama. Ooh, that's nice. There's been a lot of protests there, different protests, military presence. These uh, pole things, these fancy looking poles, those are security cameras. I had no idea. The security there is pretty insane. There's like barricades around the whole thing. To, to access it, there's like highways all around it and you kind of have to take like these underground footpath things and to get into the footpath and out of it and there's all i mean we did security coming into it and out of it it was kind of crazy i was like were you worried i bought a knife inside of the square like i don't really understand how i could have done that but okay overall i'd say there's not much going on there it's really cool to see though i mean if you're in beijing you gotta go see it tiananmen square self-immolation incident in 2001 what is that i mean leftover pizza by the way Whoa, this is crazy. I've gone down a rabbit hole of Wikipedia. <laughs> it's really fascinating. I was reading about the an incident that happened in 2001 at Tiananmen Square, and basically um, there were five people who set themselves on fire in the square. It has to do with kind of a issue going on between the Chinese government and um, a religious organization at the time called the Falun Gong. If you want to look into it, you can uh, search on Wikipedia, Tiananmen Square, and then it'll come up under the events. It's pretty interesting. Whoa, in 2013, there was an incident where a vehicle plowed into pedestrians. A 4x4 vehicle crashed into a crowd and burst into flames near the portrait of Mao Zedong at Tiananmen Square. They described it as a terrorist suicide attack. The East Turkestan Islamic Movement claimed responsibility and warned of future attacks. Yeah, good luck getting into China. They crack down at immigration. This is crazy. Before I say goodnight to you guys, I have one thing that I want to bring up. I've been debating about when to work on my vacation vlogs. We went to five different places over about 20 days in Thailand, Cambodia, and then we went to Hong Kong. So I've been trying to figure out when to get those up amidst daily vlogging. So I have an idea. Starting this coming Sunday, instead of putting up a vlog on Sunday for the next five Sundays, there will be a new vacation vlog showcasing each city we went to. I'm not sure if they're going to be longer. It's going to be more detailed and different. So let me know what you guys think about that. I think that's what I'm going to do unless I hear that you guys are very upset. Thanks for hanging out today with us, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, no, 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 no.